Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for watching. Welcome to another update for my hashtag 365 days of samples. I've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight, so I'm just going to dive right into it. So as always, I start with the products that I would not purchase the full size of. So the first thing is the Estee Edit. Uh, this is the Dissolve the Drama 2-in-1 Makeup Remover slash Cleanser. I had talked about this previously in another update. This did not work for me last time when I used it on my face, so this time I purely used it to take off swatches that I put on the back of my hand. It worked decently. Not great, honestly, even for that purpose. I just find that this is really, really messy and moves stuff around, and then it still takes a while to rub the makeup off, remove it completely, even without using a primer on my hand. So I would stay away from this if I was you. The Bumble and Bumble Thickening Shampoo and Conditioner. I know previously when I used these, I believe I said I would strongly pass on the conditioner and I can't remember if the shampoo was one that I would purchase or something that I would want to try again. Either way, I am definitely going to say no, I wouldn't purchase this. I mean, I would use it if it was given to me. If I had more samples, and I, there's a very good possibility that I do, I will use them, but it's not something I would purchase. I have found other shampoos that make my hair feel better, even if they don't necessarily look better. It's a struggle, a constant struggle with my hair, but I found a couple of things that work feeling-wise, which is something that I'm really concentrating on right now because my hair is starting to grow back. I've got all these like baby hairs up here and that's why. It's because my hair is finally growing back. It's just a little bit messy right now. Like it looks extra messy because I have all those little baby flyaways things because they're so tiny and I just can't really do anything with them. And lastly, the Uli Henriksen Sheer Transformation. So this is like a very light, oil-free moisturizer. I also have the little sample jar from Sephora, which I've tried to clean out. I definitely need to work on cleaning that out a little bit more because I'm going to hang on to this because this will be good for depotting any little cream products that I might come across. I'm always looking for little jars, so I'm gonna hang on to that. But as for this sheer transformation, a very nice, lightweight moisturizer. I feel like if I had used this at the very beginning of this challenge, I would have put it into the products I would purchase without hesitation, but I just, I wasn't crazy about it. It's not something that I finished and I immediately missed. I just didn't, it didn't speak to me like some of the other moisturizers that I have used have, so that's why I would pass on this one. And as for products that I would purchase the full size of, I actually have quite a few. And the first one is one that I have used previously. This is the Fresh Rose Face Mask. So I've used this at least once before. I really, really enjoy this face mask. It feels so fantastic on the skin. And I know that's not super descriptive. It really does leave your face feeling hydrated once you take it off of your face. It's just sometimes gel masks um, don't work that well for me just because they are gel masks, I don't find that they hydrate my skin very well, but this one definitely does. Yes. I'm glad that I know I have at least one more sample of this. I have a, a jar of it. I got the birthday gift from Sephora and I chose the Fresh set, which had the soy face cleanser, which I'd used previously in this challenge and liked, and the rose face mask. So I will continue to use this as much as possible. The next product is one that I had used previously as well, and that's the Ule Henriksen Truth Serum collagen booster. I liked this a lot the first time I used it. So, so much. I loved the overwhelmingly citrus scent. It was just so invigorating and when I put it on my skin I just felt like my skin looked better and I felt more awake and more refreshed. When I opened this one up though, maybe this is an older sample because I definitely didn't get the same scent and so I was immediately a little bit disappointed. Still a nice serum, but I definitely think this is a product that the scent is make or break for me, but I am trusting the first sample more than I am trusting this one, just because I just can't see how that would have been a mistake. I can't see how the citrus scent would have been a mistake. I just feel like this must have been an older sample, so the scent just wasn't there. Next, I have a product from Dr. Brandt. No surprise, really, because I really liked every Dr. Brandt product that I've put in this challenge, I think. A very expensive skincare brand, 
and I wish I didn't love it so much. This is the Oxygen Facial. It's a flash recovery mask. And this was the coolest experience. I had no idea what, what I was up for. I had never tried anything like this. I got one use out of this packet. And when I took it out of the packet, it looks sort of like a moisturizer. Just gonna see if I can get just a tiny bit out. Okay, so it looks like a moisturizer. But you put it on and it sort of disappears a little bit and you're like, okay, it just looks normal, I don't understand. But then it starts to fizz. And I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but it is the coolest, coolest feeling ever. It just, all these little bubbles on there start to fizz up and then disappear. My face was just so incredibly hydrated. No mask has ever made my skin look so hydrated, so radiant after just one use. It was one of those things that as soon as I finished removing it, like after the really cool experience, I liked it already. But then once I saw how good my face looked, I was like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And then I priced it and I was like, I don't want it that bad, but I do. <laughs> so I've been holding off buying it because I can't afford it right now, but I really, really want this mask. So this is definitely on my wish list. And lastly, I have two perfumes. The first one is the Giorgio Armani. This is the Aqua de Goya. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but I did finish that guy up. I used it on me because I actually really like the scent. I actually have two little sample bottles that look like this that I had from a while ago when I had gotten a sample of it. No, it wasn't, a, I had got a sample of it. It was one of those weird um, perfume samples from magazines. I was doing like the weird thing where I was trying to put it on my wrist to be like, is this gonna irritate me? And I really liked it. So I found little sample bottles from Sephora, which look like this. They're so cute. But the sample bottles are ones that you pour, not ones that you spray. So I was having the hardest time using it. It kind of smells like a mojito. And the description of it is that it's supposed to be... I know I said it smelled kind of minty and that's... I guess it smells more like a mojito. And the description of it, it says it's a glimmer of the Mediterranean, an escape between earth and sea, a thrill of crushed mint, and Calabrian lemon warmed by a sensual fusion of brown sugar and Sicilian cedar, which I think is dead on. I could definitely smell the mint and the lemon and I'm crazy about it. And I'm glad I have those little bottles to use, although I think it's still gonna be a pain trying to use them, but I definitely, I'm definitely reminded why I bought those now because the smell is just so incredible. It really is hard to describe perfumes, isn't it? That's why perfume commercials and like advertisements are just so strange because there has to be a way to make you think of a feeling rather than the scent because you can't smell it. And that's sort of like this one, which is the Replica Beach Walk. I really like the description on the the packet that the little vial came in, where it says that replica is a reproduction of familiar scents and moments of varying locations and periods. So this one says that it's Beach Walk, originally Beach Walk, um, province and period Calvi 1972. I love the 70s. Uh, fragrance description, sun kissed salty skin and style description, female fragrance. So obviously 1972 is quite a bit before my time but it did bring me back to my youth. I don't wanna be that old person who says that, but you know, that's exactly what I thought of. I was smelling it today as I was walking and I just had this moment where I was like, I know what this reminds me of. This is a brief moment of summer freedom. That is what this scent is. You can smell a little bit of sunscreen in there. You can sp smell a little bit of like a salty ocean breeze. And to me, it reminds me of a very specific small window of time. And I remember being 18 years old and going down to the uh, waterfront close to my home for Canada Day celebrations. And this would have been just about like a week or so after high school ended and it was this complete moment of freedom where I didn't have a job. I knew I was starting university in September, but I knew between July and August, 
I had nothing to do but enjoy my summer to just explore and have adventures and just do what I wanted and that's what this fragrance made made me think of it made me think of that moment of summer freedom and that's when I was like I need this I need this so badly because it just it smells it smells like that moment to me and I think that is so cool that they've kind of recreated something like that that's not so overpowering that's not so specific but can be so broad and interpreted in different ways and mean things different things to different people so that's what this fragrance meant to me I want to purchase this as my summer scent I am going to try and do what I can to save some money so that I can purchase this like in the next few weeks I really want this to be like my big purchase because I just think that I would use this daily honestly I loved it so much and so I only have a few products that I didn't get to this past week. I didn't get to the Too Cool For School Egg Cream Mask, the Nude Detox Gentle Brightening Fizzy Powder Wash, sort of the same thing. I haven't had a lot of makeup free time. I generally have been putting makeup on like fairly early in the day and not taking it off to fairly late in the evening, like generally after I finish filming or just before I'm going to bed. And these products are obviously ones that you need to have clean faces for, so I just haven't gotten to them and I just didn't want to rush it because I know I like the nude product and I want to really enjoy the sheet mask, be able to sit back and relax and just soak it in. I haven't gotten to the fresh um, creme ancient and soft cream moisturizer thing yet because I've been working on the Josie Moran one because it has SPF 47, although I did clearly did not use it in the right places today. <laughs> In lieu of using a regular sunscreen, I'm just trying to use it on places that my skin would be exposed. And I managed to like get my face and most of my chest area. I just missed like this part. My bad. And the Hemp's Pomegranate Herbal Body Moisturizer, the body lotion. I'm having a really hard time with it still getting um, product out of the bottle. I've definitely made a lot more progress. You can see emptiness there. I'm just trying to use it up as much as possible. I do like that one because it's not super sticky. And it's just helping hydrate a little bit. I've had a little like cracking eyebrow, uh, eyebrows. What? That would be weird. I'm having a little bit of cracking on my elbows. So I've been using the moisturizer a lot there. And the, I still, ridiculous guys. Okay, so the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day 5 one Styling Treatment. I am still using this and I actually like this a lot better than the last sample I used. It smells so fresh and I just, I have to stop myself from putting it like all in my hair because I just know that I would be a total grease ball. So I'm just really trying to use it at the bit, at the, the bottom, the ends of my hair. And I'm just, I'm enjoying these products. Okay, so. Samples. Let's pull out some more to use up the next week. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so the first product I have here actually reminds me that I have another product that I am still working through that I forgot to mention because it is up stairs somewhere. Um, it's the product from Eau Thermale Avene. It's another moist face facial moisturizer. Um, that was one that I've been working on for a while. This one is a new one and this is the Tolerance Extreme Cream. And this is... what is this for? It's in every other language besides English. Tell me what you do. Uh, it is specifically developed for hypersensitive and allergic skin, formulated without any potentially irritating additives, apply morning and evening to face and neck after cleansing uh, each sterile mini dose is designed to be used for three consecutive days. Beyond this time, the open mini dose should be thrown away. Be careful to close the mini dose after each application. Watch your, wash your hands before applying. Okay. I'm glad that I read that and I will make sure that I use it in three consecutive days. The next product I have here is from Origins. This is the Drink Up Intensive Overnight Mask. Yay! I always like trying overnight masks. This one is pretty much full. I think I used this once before. I have from Clinique the Clinique Smart Custom Repair Serum. 
which I believe I've used this previously as well, so I'll give it another go. I have another Dissolve the Drama 2-in-1 Makeup Remover and Cleanser from the Estee Edit. Oh joy. I'm not going to save this to give it to someone else because I honestly dislike it so much that I just would not want to give this to anyone else to use. So I will just use it again on my arm or hand or whatever to take off some watches. I have from Living Proof the Perfect Hair Day Fresh Cut Split End Mender. Hmm. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so it's supposed to be a split end treatment, which I could definitely use. So this is also, I think, a brand new sample, so this will probably take me a while to get through. I have from Hourglass the Veil. This is in light beige, the Fluid Makeup Oil Free SPF 15. So I'm guessing that this is a foundation. We'll see. And the last product I have here is from Urban Decay, their 24 hour eyeshadow primer potion. And there is four samples. Holy crap. Okay. So that's quite a bit of samples of these eyeshadow primer potions. I feel like this will take me six years to get through. Just kidding, but probably not. Um, it's the original. I have in love and just recently finished. Eden, which is a nude matte. Minor Sin, which is a champagne simmer and shimmer and the anti-aging. I've used, I believe, all three of these before, at least in samples. So I know I really love the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion, so this is definitely going to take me a long time to get through because if anybody has used the Eyeshadow Primer Potions, you will know that a little bit goes a long way and these things can last forever. But where this is my holy grail product, the original formula is, this will just be great. So that is everything for my update for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to let me know if you are doing this challenge as well or if you are just using through your samples because I'd like to see what you are using. If you have any tips or tricks, if you've used any of these products before, please do share them with me. It really does help me a lot and I greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in my next one. Bye!